I'd like to call this meeting to order at 4.03 uh, p.m. Uh, at the Central Administration Building. Um, can we go ahead and get 1.02 roll call? Uh, Jeff Balzo present. Eric Diamond. Present. Mike Dixon. Present. Rachel Drake. Absent. Tony McMillan. Present. Vicki Cooper. Present. Donna Echeverry is absent. Robert Munson. Present. Joseph Silvera. Present. Mary Beth Akers is absent. We do have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Um, so item two is um, public comment. Do we have any public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to 2.01, presentation and discussion of the Washoe County School District Group Insurance Claims Experience Report as of August 2023. We know who's oh, Lloyd's not here. So our quorum's here, but Lloyd's not here. So we will come back to that if Lloyd appears. Um, we'll go to 2.02 .02, presentation discussion of the Washoe County School District Internal Service Fund. And I see Mark is here. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Here to give another uplifting uh, review of, of our fund's financial statements. So I'll start with the, um, of course, the health insurance fund. Um, the first, uh, page one is the is our balance sheet. And I actually was hoping Lloyd could kind of tee this up a little bit and explain some of the results here, but I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, on page one, probably the first thing I'd point out to you in terms of variances from last year to this year, and I should start off by saying this, these are unaudited numbers for the fiscal year we just completed June 30th. So there may be a few tweaks in here, here and there to the numbers based on our audit, but for the most part, this is where we ended up the fiscal year. Um, so again, start off with the balance sheet. Um, actually, I'll start at the very bottom. I'll, I'll jump to the end of the story here. Um, you can see there, um, we went from a beginning net position in fiscal year 23 of 36.68 million and ended up with a net position of 30.8 one three million um, so we saw a loss there you can see a change in net position of six point six million so um, unfortunately um, you know we had come to you throughout the the fiscal year hoping to see a reversal of some of the cost and revenue trends in the fiscal year and really didn't now there there was a transaction we processed in June that that had us come out better than what we were tracking so you remember we were losing approximately a million dollars a month out of this fund and, and of course you can see we didn't end up there and i'll explain why in, in, in a page or two um, but but again in terms of kind of cost and revenue trends it really didn't significantly improve over the course of the fiscal year we just saw that continuing increase in costs which are again you know based on prior conversations between um, you all and lp and ourselves uh, just a reflection of greater utilization of services by our members, which is fine. Um, unfortunately, our rates hadn't kept up um, to, to match that increased utilization. So we did see a, a loss for the fiscal year of 6.6 .6 million. The only other thing I'd point out to you is the increased um, IBNR, which stands for incurred but not reported claims. So these are future claims. Uh, we reserve um, uh, uh, monies for those future claims and that went up from 6.3 million this is around the middle of the page to 7.5 million makes sense if our right if our overall utilization is increasing that we would see an increase in future claims and these are claims roughly over the next three months um, where we're reserving those but also over a, a little longer period of time so um, that that's um, Again, the balance sheet for you to see, again, all the numbers represented the 12 months ending June 30th of 2023 compared to the 12 months ending June 30th of 2022. So unless there's questions on that, I'll move on to the next page. The next page covers again, operating revenues. Um, the good news here going down to the category of other is that we saw a million six increase in prescription rebates. So we went from 5.85 million last fiscal year in, in terms of prescription rebates. I'm 
sorry, I'm looking, I'm making sure I'm seeing the same thing you are. Yes, 5.85 million to seven, seven and a half million in rebates. So that was nice to see. Um, we also saw a reversal of our investment earnings. We saw investment earnings of 644,000 in fiscal year 23 versus a negative paper loss of 274,000 in fiscal year 22. So we've kind of climbed out of um, our paper losses and are showing you know, strong returns based on where interest rates are today. And then most significantly, you'll see the um, OPEB retiree medical reimbursement of $4 million. So we brought in $4 million for um, retiree medical costs from the OPEB trust fund to reimburse the health insurance fund for those costs. So that's why we didn't end up with a loss closer to $11 million is because we moved those monies out of the trust fund, uh, the OPEB trust fund into the health insurance fund. And that's what it's for. So um, we did execute on that this fiscal year. Um, so operating revenues were up 8%, which is wonderful. Um, um, and then we move on to expenses, which is on page three. And again, um, I think this reflects trends we had seen throughout the fiscal year and that Lloyd and LP have talked to you about. Overall medical services costs increased nearly $10 million um, uh, or 21%. And um, we saw increases in well, as well in prescription drugs and other categories here. Um, so overall, our operating expenses near the bottom of this increased from 84.36 million in fiscal year 22 to 96.2 million in fiscal year 23. Again, an increase of 11.8 million or nearly a million dollars per month. Overall increase of 14%. So expenses went up 14% and revenues only went up 8%, which is why we had that deficit. Uh, the next page then, unless there are any questions, covers kind of our monthly revenues. Um, we did see here, if you have questions, we, um, we would note just for the months of November and May, a little bit of uptick in revenues and that reflects um, ESP's um, biweekly um, pay period deductions, they have three pay periods in those months, so that's why you see a little bump up in those months. But again, nothing, I don't think, terribly notif noticeable or, or notable about our revenues here month over month. Um, generally, we like, we expect to see a little bit of an uptick in revenues at, in the second half of the year as we see new employees come online and we get past that uh, the then current 90 day waiting period for benefits. But here we really, it was a much more flatter kind of revenue picture on a monthly basis. And then we move to monthly expenses. Um, again, we saw some significant months in December and March. Um, I think we've talked about those months before. It really, we didn't see, it. it, it we were hoping to see somewhat of a issue here related to timing and that we might see a, a dramatic decrease in expenses in, the, in those months following December and March, and we really didn't. Um, so we, you know, again, would, would postulate that these are expenses we saw as a result of our employees taking advantage of, of the, you know, winter break and the spring break to, to get services done and see their doctor. So not a shock to see an uptick, but the size of the uptick certainly was unexpected. Okay, and then the next page gives you a historical view, fiscal year 18 through fiscal year 23 of our expenses. Um, you can see there, obviously, you know, how we overall saw, saw quite an increase in our expenses in, in 23. Um, and for, for many of the months, we hit all-time highs in our expenses. Not every month of the fiscal year, but for many months, that was our high watermark for expenses. Again, reflecting greater utilization. I, I'm recalling the last presentation I gave, and 
I think it was LP's opinion that we've actually not seen inflation yet kind of affect these numbers too much. And so inflation may be coming down the pike as contracts get renegotiated. Next slide is our uh, historical net position, um, or you may know it as fund balance. Um, so again, we ended up the year a um, little over $30 million. So thankfully we had built, built up that fund balance, as you know, over the last several years. So it's kind of been a, a little bit of a roller coaster. We went up significantly in terms of our fund balance in fiscal year 21. Um, and then slightly more in 22, 21, of course, we were, we had COVID going on. A lot of people couldn't access medical services during that period of time. So we saw costs very low and now we're seeing, um, costs increase again, greater utilization. This could be people who had put off procedures before, or it could be the case that they didn't do the proactive things and see their doctor like they should, even though some of us don't, but, and now they're paying, you know, uh, they're paying the price. Um, so I, I'll let Lloyd and LP speak to that more, but um, again, ended up the year um, kind of six million uh, with a $6 million uh, decrease to our fund balance or net position going from 36.7 million to 30 million. The last several pages cover our wellness fund. There's really not a lot here to, to note uh, revenues and expenses track much more closely for our wellness fund in fiscal year 23. So we maintained a, a very positive fund balance of 666,000 in fiscal year 23. So we're in good shape there. That concludes my summarization of where we ended up fiscal year 23. If there's anything I went too fast on or you have questions about, I'll try to answer them. Again, LP Insurance has a lot of the kind of information behind the scenes as to kind of where those numbers derive from, but I'm, I'm happy to try to answer them. Okay, any questions for Mark? Eric? I have uh, just a quick question. This is on page six, the Health Insurance Internal Service Fund expense history. 2018 to 23? Yes. Just help me, if you can help me uh, figure out what the number is. This will be Mar uh, February in 2022, 2023, and it shows percent change at 204%. Is that as compared to the previous year? The, yes, uh, it, yes, it is. The 2.1 it's, it's, versus it's the 6.5? Yeah, they're year over year differences in the monthly numbers. So. 6.5 million, we saw cost of 6.5 million in February of 23, and that's basically triple the monthly cost for February of 2 million that you see, okay. yes. Maybe a follow-up question with Lloyd on the specifics on that, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thanks Mark, I Okay, thank it. you. We'll go back to 2.01 since uh, Lloyd's here. Uh, presentation discussion of the Washoe County School District Group Insurance Claims Experience Report as of August 2023. Good afternoon. Lloyd Barnes with LP Insurance Services. Apologize for being late. Thank goodness for flexible agendas I like that. Um, and it, it does feel a little bit like being tardy at school, though. That I have to say, there's a little bit of that anxiety going Especially on. Especially when you're sitting in front of a bunch of administrators. Exactly, and teachers, right? exactly. Um, okay, so looking at uh, our claims uh, and cost exhibits for the month of August, see here in our executive, sem executive summary, Exhibit 1, um, employee counts, independent counts are pretty flat for for this year, as I, we've talked about, that's remained fairly stable. Um, and as we look into the uh, net pay claims on line four, you can see that's up, uh, we're, we're running up about 6.3% compared on an average basis compared to last year, and on a composite base uh, basis, about 5.6%. Fixed costs are pretty flat as expected as well, which gives us an overall uh, total plan costs of uh, 6.5 million compared to 6.1 million last year on average per month, uh, which is up about 5.9%. And we're averaging uh, 936.06 this year versus 889.5 uh, 
5.13 last year, so about 5.3%. <clears throat> still a little early in the year, but uh, we are starting to grow those large claims. We're still, we still have a, a material number less than we had last year, but they, they, are, they are growing as we'll see a little further in the, in the presentation. Uh, on the next page, again, this is our, our rolling 12-month uh, average rolling cost per employee. And uh, I'd say, call, I'm gonna call it good news is we do seem to see a leveling out of that. Um, it is leveling out at the higher higher level, which we know and have watched, but uh, it does appear to be leveling out a bit. So um, as the adjustments come into play as of January 1, we should hopefully see those numbers get closer together, those lines get closer together, I should say, and then hope for a little bit of downward trend at some point. Uh, looking at Exhibit 2, specific to the month of August of uh, this year, um, I'll just sort of carry it down uh, on line 10. We had uh, cost per employee of 4.65 uh, $4 million, uh, on a, and then on a composite basis, 669. And for dependents, we had 2.54 million for the month. Um, composite case, composite cost per dependent of 585 adding them all together, uh, $7.25 uh, million dollars, uh, for a composite cost per employee on the claim side of 1 million 40, or 1, 1,042.93, and then adding in the fixed cost um, of 385,000, got a total composite cost per employee of 1,098. So pretty big month, um, one of your three largest months of the year so far, uh, and you know, that's, resulting in that overall 5.3% higher cost as compared to last year on a composite cost per employee. So um, again, you know, building on Mark's summary of fiscal year, uh, fiscal year, fiscal year 23, um, as we look into the first couple months of your fiscal year 24, 23, 24, July wasn't too bad, August does seem to be up a bit, so. Skip through exhibits, uh, the next few exhibits, and get to the large claims, which is, I believe, exhibit 12. And as you can see there, um, we did have one new large claim present uh, for the month, number uh, number 15 there. Um, and then as we get to exhibit 13, uh, we did have one. Uh, new claim pierced the $425,000 specific deductible. So uh, some of those dollars will be coming back to you, or those dollars will be coming back to the plan through stop loss reimbursement at some point. Any questions, Eric? <clears throat> uh, just uh, air time for the record, if we can take a look at what we had just referenced, or I had just referenced in, I think it was March, or February, March of 23, um, where the 200% increase came in over year by year. Uh, do we have any idea where that utilization is? Uh, let's go to, can we go to Mark's exhibit there where you're looking at that? Is that the one you're referring to? Yeah, I'm getting back to it now myself. Uh, yeah, 204. Yep, that's the one. So let's see. So that's February. Uh, can, you, can you pull up the headers for us? Just go down a little bit further. There we go. Let's see what that says. Um, so. Uh, go over just a little bit to the that way. There we go. Um, so I, I, so it looks like that's a, a that's a fiscal year change. Twenty two twenty three compared to twenty one twenty two. So if you look at your twenty one twenty two number, if you can see there, it's two point one million. I, I, I'm gonna if I'm just looking at this and again. I'm, 
I'm not able to speak completely to Mark's numbers here, but you can see there are 6.5 million, right? Uh, and if you look at the 21-22, there was, the number was 2.1 million. So I believe what's going on there is you, you had you had a very low month probably due to some sort of stop loss reimbursement back in 21-22 that is making the, the change, the delta be that 200%. The number for 22-23 at 6.5 million doesn't seem out of line with your other numbers in that column. It's that $2 million back in the previous year that is throwing that uh, comparison out, out of whack from my perspective. Right, and I appreciate that, thank you. And I am seeing that that 21-22 year was at a negative 67, almost 60, 68%, so I can see that. But I was just curious where the 200% increase had come, and so, yeah, potentially with an, a reimbursement, and then seeing that it was coming from a negative in the previous number. Yeah, for you to have a, a $2 million month, which would be basically, that's, that's the lowest month on the page out of whatever five years that is. So there, there had to have been some sort of material reimbursement for in that month that took everything down. S something certainly changed from, an ex from a cost standpoint that, that, that dropped that number. It's, it's not so much that the number, other numbers are so much higher, that number is just so much lower. Right, and again, I appreciate that explanation. And that, uh, it, do we normally see the, the reimbursements come in that early portion of the year? from the previous year? I mean, I know it's not set. There, there's, no, there's, there's no right answer to that. It, it, they'll come in depending upon when the claim was paid and when the, when the claim gets settled up with the stop loss carrier. Okay, yep. thank could, you. Could that also be like a PEB infusion or something like that also in one month or? No, Just I mean, like, that, that, it, it, as I'm reading this, um, or these, are expen drugs. these are expenses. So it could be, could be a combination of rebates depending upon how, uh, how finance books your rebates and stop loss reimbursements, and maybe it was just a low month on top of those things. Um, that would be my guess. And I don't, we don't have the, the month over month on our report right now, because we're into the new year. Um, but it, every once in a while, we'll have one of those just weird anomaly months that gets, everything comes at you all at once, and so it ends up being a, so we've actually had negative claims months where you actually had money back, so to speak, instead of an expense. And the month Thank before it was $2 million higher than any other month in the year, so except, yeah. except the first, so that might be part of it the way, because sometimes you have, and February is one of those months to also note that we have fewer days in the month, so isn't there cycles uh, billing cycles there are check cycles um, so it's it's not so much the it, it's really how the uh, the weeks fall within the month and there usually are a couple of months throughout the year where you'll have a five check run month and so there'll be an they'll, it'll, there'll be an anomaly upward a couple of times a year where where you're, you're you had five check runs in a given month and I guess the root of my question initially was was there some form of utilization that our members were using to to create that that expense but it sounds like we've kind of settled on the fact that it's a combination of some sort of some sort of offset or possible rebate that, that offset those numbers i, to that I think that's pretty safe to say yeah okay any other questions Well, thank you for not sending me to detention. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you for sitting here the whole time last month with not a quorum. So appreciate that. Thank you, Lloyd. Okay. 2.03 presentation discussion of the Washington County School District uh, group insurance anthems, claims, activity, and turnaround reports as of August 2023. Welcome. Hi. In person. So Pam Davidson for the record from Anthem. <laughs> so I think you have the medical one up first. So I'll go over the August numbers. In August, you had a higher amount of claims. That was 14,913 process claims total. Um, in Within 14 days, 14,806 were processed. Within 30, it was 14,878. Within 60, 14,903. And within 90 days, 14,906 claims, bringing it to a 99.95% processed rate for that month. 
Um, you also had 7,106 RX claims that came day of service or processed the same day. Out of those 14,913 claims, um, 13,466 were processed on your PPO plan and 1,447 were processed on the HSA plan. So I know I know I only come quarterly now. Do you guys have any questions on the medical turnaround report? Were we go to dental? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tony McMillan, can you clarify? Was that for August? That was for August. That was for August. Okay, because the we don't have August numbers. That's why I just wanted to. Um, they were mailed. I just want to confirm. Emailed to Veronica. Do you, I can re-email them if you want to add them to the notes afterwards, but yeah. So the latest report had August in it. So I'll email them to you and you can just email them out to the board afterwards. Okay. Any other questions on that? Um, the dental also has August. Does your dental report show August as well? Or was this just, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so on the dental, we had, of course, 2,517 claims come in, and dental claims are processed pretty much within 30 days. They have to be. So um, within 30 days, they processed 96.2% of the claims, and then 100%, I think, were processed in 30, within 30 days. Do you have any questions on the dental turnaround? Dental's pretty quick. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll go ahead and email Veronica um, those claims. I can just do it real quick from my phone. And um, you can just forward them to the board. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, 2.04 presentation discussion of the Washington County School District Group Insurance Wellness Program report to cover current events and programs as of August 2023. It's okay. It's, yeah, I get to put on my wellness hat. Uh, this is Mackenzie Horn for the record. Um, so our first two updates for the wellness program are pretty standard for this time of year. Our health assessment is open and will be open through December 1st. If our members go on and complete their health assessment on Virgin Pulse before the December 1st deadline, they'll activate that monthly $40 health premium discount for all of 2024. And our wellness screenings are available um, through November 18th, which is a Saturday. Uh, members have the options to participate in one of our school events. We'll be at all of our major high schools. Again, this year we have uh, four Saturday events at Specialty Health. And then we have some designated lab core locations that our members are also able to go to. Um, our last uh, update I'm pretty excited to share about. So in August, our, we had a mama van come to this building here. So the Nevada Health Centers has a mama van and it essentially is an 18 wheeler truck that can provide mammograms on site. And in one day, they can complete 19 appointments, and we completed 17 appointments from 7.40 to 3.20 in the afternoon. Um, we set this up because last year we did some claims analytics, and we saw that we spend quite a bit um, on breast cancer. So uh, we're working with our state collaborative for that focuses on cancer to see what type of educational materials and activities we could get out to our members to hopefully minimize, well, get our, our members access to the care that they need and then also minimize the amount that we spend in claims. So this is a good example of what a process of claims analytics can look like. Does anyone have any questions? I have two. Um, the first one that I have is on the health assessment, if they go on Virgin Pulse by December 1st, they get the $40 um, assessment waived um, but what about in the past our new employees didn't need to do that because they didn't do that till the second year but now that they're starting on day one with insurance do they need to do that as well 
Good question, Robert. So um, we made the determination that if your benefits, well, so previously, if your benefits weren't active by June 1st, you did not have to do the health assessment for that for the following year. Um, June 1st this year seemed a little early um, because your benefits are active on day one. So we decided that the new deadline would be September 1st so to ensure that everyone had the same time frame to complete their health assessment. Okay, so our new employees who began this year and had, you know, if they were hired before September 1st, they will need to complete that health assessment. Um, the other question I had um, about the, um, I just went blank, um, the health assessment. I don't remember, so it's okay. that's good. You can come back. Okay, Jeff. Uh, Jeff also for the record, uh, Mackenzie, I just wanted to thank you and your uh, wellness team for using the data analytics approach um, to, you know, obviously the finance background keep down the cost, but more importantly, help uh, minimize risk, health risk to our members. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And to my understanding also, when we're trying to look at utilization, I mean, it's like if somebody goes to the urgent care, it's gonna cost us more than if they go to their family doctor. But also, if they go to their family doctor for a wellness check, and they have it coded as a wellness check, so therefore it's not, you know, the regular visit, that costs our insurance less as well, doesn't it? Or, because they don't have, a, the, the same thing, if it's coded as wellness, then it's different, isn't it? Because I know a lot of people go just to do the, like a wellness check with their doctor. I would think so, because the code would be different, but I'm not entirely sure I can follow up with you on that. Okay. All right, any other questions for me? Oh, do, that was my other question. Yay. New employees who've already picked their insurance, they don't need to meet with a um, representative from American Fidelity like the other employees do for everything because they've already set that up, I assume? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's correct. Okay. No other questions? Okay, thank you. And we will move on to 2.05, which is the approval of the minutes that were emailed out the June 21st, 2023 meeting. Um, if everybody's had a chance to look at them, if you haven't, uh, take a minute and look at them and then entertain a motion if there is one. June was a long time ago. Uh, for the record, Jeff Balzo, I move to approve the minutes of the June 21st, 2023 meeting. Do we have a second? Joseph Severa, I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt the minutes uh, from the June 21st, 2023 meeting. Um, any discussion? Okay, all in favor of adopting the minutes for June 21st, 2023, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Okay, motion is adopted. Okay. 3.01, public comment. Is there any public comment? Okay, seeing none. We'll move to 3.02, which is adjournment. Uh, I do want to announce that the next meeting is October 25th, um, 2023, here in the um, boardroom uh, okay and 3.03 we are adjourned at 436